Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one we're going to be covering the different ways to reference objects. So I can think of about four or five different ways. Um, there might be more, but I don't really think so. Um, and if there are, then they're very far-fetched probably. The common ways of referencing game objects. Uh, first of all, you can have you know public variables that you uh, pass in, which works some of the time, but not for everything, uh, as I'll get into and I'll explain which ones to use when. Uh, there is uh, using singletons, but you can only use this in certain cases, but it's very good in certain cases, so I'll show you uh, why to use those and when to use those. Then there's also injection, which is uh, good in most cases and is very useful a lot of the time. Um, and then we also have scritchable objects, which I've already made videos on, but I'm going to cover it briefly in this as well. Um, so I'm going to show you, you know, why to use them and when. So I'm going to start by thanking my Patreons, thanks to Paul, Robinson, Fulbaum and Wesley for their $5 donations on Patreon. If anyone else wants to or could help out on Patreon to keep the channel going, then that would be very well appreciated. Thank you. So, 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 I'm continuing with one of my uh, projects, Unity Tips and Tricks. I'm not necessarily calling it a series, but it kind of is. Anyway, um, you don't need anything uh, for this. You can just watch. You don't need to follow along. Um, they're just five, four or five different things that you're going to... Um, be able to implement and obviously you'll know some of them but i'll explain why to use them and, and i'll cover all five so we start off we've got a cube and a manager the manager has a game manager script it's got that icon because it's the name it doesn't, it doesn't matter um and this has a referencing script because i just wanted to call it referencing that's what the video is about so we've got this object and we've got the game manager so let's say the game manager has um a variable on it you want to get access to you know you need to reference it from somewhere so private integer um, current score or something. Um, let's just set it equal to 10, why not? So that's the current score and you know this, this object, uh, the cube might want to know the score at some point. So there's different ways of referencing it. So we're going to start off with having a um, like get current score method which would just um, return current score basically. Um, public int get current score. Okay, so it just returns that. So if we go on here, let's say we want a public um, game manager, so reference to the game manager called game manager. And then down here we can just say on void start, uh, we'll, we'll use debug.log for this just for the sake of it. So debug.log and then we'll say uh, game manager dot get, um, what do you call it, current score. Okay. So basically we're going to get the current score returned from the game manager. Now you want to reference that. So here's one way, right? Having a public or it's the same as having a serialized field private, but this is be better practice. It lets you drag it in, but unless you need to reference this from another script, I mean, you should always use private in practically every situation um, and write getters and setters instead of writing um, just public variables. So here we go. We can drag in our managers. We've got reference to the managers and we press play. And on the start method, it should debug log 10. Okay, so we've got reference to it. Benefits to this, it's simple. That's basically it. Uh, it's simple and it's quick, you know, you just drag it and you're done. Um, the That's the only real benefit. The negatives are that you can't drag things in that don't exist in the scene. So if your manager script persists through scenes, like let's say you have it on your start scene, you go to level one, go to level two, you can't simply do this because it's moving around. You can't just drag in uh, the prefab or anything because uh, even on a prefab, you can only drag in other prefabs, and even then, I still don't think it works most of the time. You can drag in things that are on itself in terms of the hierarchy. If I had a, another object under it with a script on, I could drag that in because they'll always be together, but you can't do that in this case. So that's good and simple for certain things if you're dragging in components on the same object, but even then, you should just use get component. Um, maybe, you know, there are situations you do this, but it's very rare. You don't usually do it for referencing other scripts. Um, so yeah, that's one number one. One you might know is the easiest one to use. You might use it a lot when you start, but it's not the best practice and it's very limited. So number two, rather than just publicly referencing them, is using singletons, which is what I've already kind of covered before in the past. Uh, I've done singletons before. So this game manager, there's only going to be one of it, right? So we're going to say public static. Static lets it know that there's only one of it. Um, game manager. So that's what type it is. We'll call it instance because that's what I usually call, uh, or what people usually call uh, singletons. You could do some people do game manager dot like game manager and then call this game manager. But then you reference it, you would call game manager dot game manager. It make more sense to do game manager dot instance because it's the instance of the game manager. And then all you need to do this to set it up is private void awake. This is just the best way to do it. Um, 
a wake happens before start, so if you do all of your instant setting on a wake, then in, if you do all of the instant getting on start um, in other scripts, they'll always exist. If you do them both in a wake or both in start, you can have problems with things happening before other things that you don't mean to happen. So this is just to keep uh, make sure they always exist in time. So you can say if instance does not equal null, uh, sorry, if instance does equal null, um, <coughs> then um, instance is equal to this. So basically, if, if instance doesn't already exist, if there is no um, instance of the game manager, will take uh, that job, you know, will become that. Um, else if instance does not equal this. So basically, if it gets to this line, because uh, obviously if this is uh, true, then we're not going to run this one. So if that's false, if instance isn't null, which means it exists, if it exists and it's not us, then we're going to say destroy this script because that means we already have an instance and you know this is useful uh, useless sorry it's a duplicate and that's basically the setup that just makes sure that there's no problems with it and then obviously that can be referenced from anywhere so let's say um, we have our private I should have kept it private int uh, current score equals 15 now why not um, if we then went down and said uh, public int get current score I'll keep this method this time <laughs> I won't delete it um, return current score. So if we go over here, <clears throat> we can't have this anymore because, um, well, te technically we could if it was in the same scene, but we wouldn't do that. It'd be silly. What you want to do now is you want to get reference to that instance. And the benefit is if we're in a different scene to where it started, we can still reference it because it exists. It's persisted through the scenes. The obvious thing is here, we wouldn't use this. We wouldn't, I mean, you can cache it. So, um, Let's get rid of the serialized field. Let's just say we want a private reference of it, a uh, private thing of it, so we can, I'll show you the two ways. So let, let's say this doesn't exist, okay? So what we can do is on the start, we can just say um, game manager dot instance. So we'll go get the instance of it dot get current score, right? And then we can uh, debug dot log that. Um, okay. And that means we'll go find the one instance of it. Single uh, static means there's only ever one of it. Uh, so if there's only ever one, we know exactly which one to get. So the you know it, it, we're allowed to reference just game manager instance because there never can be another one. Um, and then we'll get the current score. The problem with this is um, this works fine, and you might use this sometimes occasionally. But the problem is this call. Uh, I don't exactly know how taxing it is, but you really shouldn't be calling this all the time in your script. Uh, if you call it once, you know, if it's actually a one-off thing, then do it, sure. But if you are going to be calling it multiple times, it's best to cache it. So the way you do that is you would store a private reference to a game manager script. Keep in mind here, you're not storing the game manager scripts, you're storing a reference to it. It's so like you don't have the game manager script in here, you just know where it is in memory. So that whenever you need to refer to it, you've already got it stored rather than getting it again. It's, uh, you know, called caching if you cache stuff. If your browser caches an image, it means that next time you go to a page to load that image, it loads basically instantly because it doesn't need to go download it again. So we can say um, game manager is equal to game manager dot instance. Whoops, dot instance. I can't type. <laughs> dot instance. And then you can reference this game manager variable lowercase, and that means that you're just referencing the reference. You're calling the reference in memory rather than getting it again. Dot uh, get current score. Okay, and I'll do the same thing. Um, don't need to really show that working. Okay, I promise you'll work. If you really want to see, then we'll do this. And we'll go run it. Shouldn't take too long to compile. It's a very small scene. So we get 15. Done. And if you look on here, the cube, we don't actually have any reference to the script. Well, we do under the hood in the code. Um, so that's the second way. The benefits to it, well, you can reference it from anywhere, right? Um, which is fine. You know. That, that works most of the time. You can use that for a lot of things, you know, having managers. Like, let's say you're um, checking just an overall manager, like the quest manager, the quest system. You know, you don't... It, it just exists in one place only, and it's there to be called by lots of things, so you can make a singleton of it. That's that's the use of it. Um, so that's, like, method two. So method three, we can do um, injection or scriptful objects. I'll save scriptful objects till the end. So um, injection. So let's say we had... Um, 
a script that spawns something because that's generally the time you use injection. Injection is used when you create something. So for example, if you're shooting something off, you create a projectile, you need to give it data. You might as well just pass it in rather than getting it to reference it itself. If you already have a reference, just tell it. You know, it's like passing down family thing. I don't know. You already know something. So rather than getting it to learn itself, you can give it to it. It's like inheritance almost, but not, not in terms of coding inheritance. You're not like deriving from a, from a class. Um, so the way I could show this, I mean, I'm not going to bother making a new script. We'll just use the game manager. So let's say um, we store this cube as a prefab that we want to spawn. OK, let's give it a second. We're going to spawn this cube with the referencing script on it. So we're going to delete the cube. And this uh, manages thing. We can have a uh, serialized field private game object. This is just the prefab to spawn. So imagine this is a spawner. OK. Um, and what you would do is you would have maybe on the uh, start method, you would say instantiate um, the prefab to spawn at our position, transform dot position, transform dot rotation. All right, so you spawn it where you are. But then you want to actually tell it something. So rather than having the private reference of the game manager, you can still have that. Um, rather than getting in here and you know having this, um, maybe what you'll do is you have a private void uh, display score, I don't know, whenever you want to call that. And that would just um, say um, debug.log game manager dot get current score. Problem is this won't work because we don't know what this is. We can't uh, drag it in because it's a, just a private. We can't uh, get the singleton because imagine this wasn't a singleton anymore. Uh, it doesn't have to be for this to work. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to pass it in. So generally people use uh, initialize. That's just the standard way people write injectors like this. So you would write a uh, public void initialize. So initialize. I spelled that wrong last time. That's the English British way of spelling it without a Z. So what you do here is you want to basically write the parameters to be whatever you need to know when you start this off. So we could write game manager, game manager. And what we'll do here is we'll just say on the initialize, this dot game manager is equal to game manager. And the reason you're allowed to do this is because, well, if we didn't write this dot, it'll say there's a problem, green underline usually, because that's called game manager spelled like that, and that's called game manager spelled like that, so it doesn't know what to set to what. So if you specify this dot, then we'll know that we want to set this, the actual variable we're storing, equal to this, the parameter we're passing in. You can actually see parameter and field. There you go. So uh, you don't. Have, you could just call that a different name, but I like doing that the same name, and I can say this dot is equal to that, and that means that now when we call, so we could just say um, maybe after we've initialized, we want to display score, right? Um, so this script only gets reference to the game manager from the thing that spawns it, and the thing that spawns it obviously knows about itself. So if we get rid of this uh, private void away, we get rid of this uh, instance of itself. You know, you'd have a prefab spawn and a current score, um, and then here we initialize it. So if I go back and press console, all I need to do now is let the manager know what it's spawning. So obviously you'd have a spawner of some sort for this. It's going to spawn a cube. And then that cube doesn't appear to be calling the thing. Um, that's because I didn't actually do the initialize function, because I'm a silly. So if we go back to the game manager where we instantiate it, we can then say, um, we want to get a particular uh, component on it. So we can actually, we could even just say um, in one line dot get component uh, referencing like that dot initialize. And we want to pass in a game manager. And in this case, we're passing in the script itself. Now you could put this into multiple lines if you wanted to. You could even, you could go for a referencing referencing oh, so that's a stupid um, name for the actual um, <laughs> that's a stupid name for the variable it's a bit off I don't, just having the word those times a bit silly then we can just say referencing dot um, current uh, sorry initialize and pass in this you could even spell it out further you could set that to the game object then do game object dot get component rather than having that on one line but that works so now we're saying whenever we spawn a, an object from the game manager, we should let it know about ourselves. So that's like the cheapest way to do it, if you know what I mean. Because there's no calling, there's no grabbing information from anywhere. We we know about ourselves and we're just going to pass that in. You know, we're just going to tell it about ourselves. 
Um, so that's one way to do it. And I guess finally the other way to do it is scriptable objects. So your referencing would have a public game manager, which would be a scriptable object. Uh, create asset menu. I've done this plenty of times. This should be. If you've watched my videos, you'll have seen this before. I use scriptable objects a lot. So file name, game manager. Could go as far as even doing like menu name uh, is manager slash game manager, something like that. And then uh, this wouldn't need a thing to spawn. It would just need a uh, current score. And then wouldn't have a start method because you can't have a start method. And yeah, just that. I mean, you usually with scriptable objects because um, if you want to serialize stuff, I think you need everything to be public that you want serializing. So we just have a public int current score that it stores. And all we need to do in here is just say on the void start uh, game manager dot current score and then you can just debug dot log that if you want debug dot log that uh, and obviously I'll explain the benefits and negatives to that and the injection system I'll cover that again in a second the reasons to use it and not to so if we went right click create uh, oh, we're getting some. There we go. Never mind. Create managers, game manager. Um, I don't know. Man, uh, I'll just call it game. Current score is 2000 or whatever. <laughs> go to the managers. Um, doesn't have a script on it anymore because it's not a mono behavior. It doesn't go on objects. Put our queue back in. And in here, the referencing, we want a. Um, we want to be able to pass in the scriptable object. There's not really any other ways to like get scriptable objects unless you're referencing a script that already has it, you know, referenced. But at the root of things, you have to have it passed in. So we're passing in a, the game manager object here, and it's going to debug.log that. So there you go, two four one two four. So uh, let's go back quickly. So the two I haven't explained why and when injection. So that is probably the best one. Uh, the reasons because whenever something it, that's spawning lots of other things rather than those like let's say you had something which was shooting um shooting something right um maybe some projectile and that projectile you wanted to tell them oh yeah uh, you're meant to explode like maybe the thing shooting it uh, has been told to now start firing explosive bullets now maybe you might have a prefab for explosive bullets or maybe your actual the thing you're um, shooting off, you need to tell it to change something on a script of itself. So you can get the script of itself and do it through the actual spawner, rather than the spawner, uh, the thing that's being spawned calling back saying, uh, you know, bloody blah dot instance, should I get this? So rather than having like a hundred calls a second saying, you know, to the manager, oh, should I be this, should I be this, should I be this? Whenever you spawn something, you can pass it in. So there's no callbacks. There's nothing, nothing that spawn has to call any code. You can just, um, be spawned with the code you need. So it is very good for that. It's quite efficient. Um, probably the one you want to go with most of the time. Obviously the one I mentioned first, the public dragging in is the least of the time. It's not very useful um, most of the time. Then you want to have, um, what else is a uh, scriptable objects. So that's good for data that doesn't change. Um, or at least if it's something like this that changes, you're gonna want to actually save it. So the score obviously you might wanna save. So that means you have to save it to a text file. Um, and disadvantage of scriptable objects, uh, you shouldn't use them for everything. They're usually used as data containers, but you can have code on them. But generally, if you're gonna have code on them, it shouldn't be to do much of the game stuff. It should be more of the under the hood. So like maybe you'll have a script which stores data and then all the functions will do stuff with that data, but you won't have functions that are like um, actually doing stuff in the game. I mean, you can have that, and I actually do have that in my own game, so I'm a bit of a hypocrite there. I have uh, scriptable objects that store the how spells work, and then I can uh, tweak that for like augmented spells and stuff. But um, the logic, you gotta keep in mind with scriptable objects, you can't have uh, void star, update, um, that kind of stuff, because Unity only has callbacks every frame in mono behaviors that exist on the objects in the scene that can get called. They don't exist. Scriptable objects are just data assets in your files. So they are very good for certain things, but obviously there's things that they're also not that good for. But dependency injection uh, is probably your best bet um, and singletons like a covered. But anyway, I think that's uh, it. I, if any of you like this video, found it helpful and obviously uh, leave a like and subscribe. It would mean a lot. Join our Discord server if you haven't already. Uh, but apart from that, thanks for watching. And goodbye.